had prepared an organization chart for Mr. Curry's group of people, the people that Mr. Curry uh, has working for him or had working for him as of the fall of 1988 in a unit called Corporate Communications. Mr. Curry is the person who initially proposed a reorganization of this group that would have left Mrs. Becker out. And what Mr. Consul says about that is, is quite true. The, the next witness you'll hear from, and not in any particular order, <coughs> is a man named Donnie Upman. Now, Donnie Upman is in the field of human resources, and he's a, a fellow who works for Mr. Nearing. Uh, what Mr. Nearing does not know about the, uh, the testimony, or excuse me, what, what he does not know about the decision-making process, Mr. Upman probably does know, because Mr. Upman is the guy who actually prepared the lab for us tonight, sort of thing. The final witness of our four main witnesses is Jeanette Lerman. Now, Jeanette Lerman was Mr. Curry's boss. He's up here somewhere on the organization chart. Uh, Jeanette Lerman was, is not available to testify. She no longer works for Unisys Corporation, but we took her deposition on video thing about two weeks ago. So at some point this week, or maybe early next week, we'll wheel a television uh, in and let you watch uh, the deposition of Jeanette Lerman on video tape. Uh, she was the boss, like I say, way up here, and she pretty much is responsible for approving the decision that Mr. Curry proposed. Now, these four employees that you're going to hear from are the people who actually made all the decisions here. They're responsible for Mrs. Becker's decision to take retirement to the extent she isn't responsible for it herself. Now, I want to give you a brief summary of what the testimony is going to be. First of all, let me refer here to the organization chart. I'm mean, using the pointer to do that. Uh, as we said, the Unisys Corporation arose out of the merger between Sperry and Burroughs. Sperry was headquartered in Blue Belt, Pennsylvania, out in Montgomery County, it's a, a suburb of Philadelphia. Burroughs was headquartered in Detroit, Michigan. They merged. You had a great deal of duplication. I think that's the word, duplication of effort. So what they had, as of the fall of 1988, is two libraries, two corporate libraries. One of them was located in Blue Belt, one was located in Detroit. They also had this unit called Public Affairs. Now, Public Affairs is essentially responsible for, well, it's in large part responsible for, and you'll hear testimony about this, they give away the company's money. They're responsible for making charitable contributions to organizations that come to a big company and say, hey, would you fund this? Or would you help us with this particular project? And that's what these people do. Well, there were two public affairs organizations, one in Blue Belt and one in Detroit. There's also a unit here called Sports Marketing, which comes from Burroughs. Uh, sports Marketing does things like uh, provide the computer services for the US golf league and provide computer services for the US tennis league. And the upshot of it all is that Unisys gets a benefit by having their computers seen on, uh, on the pictures of the, of the torch. That's what that meant. That's what, again, you're talking about giving away the company's computers, giving away the money. Now, you will notice Unisys is a computer company. None of these people make computers. They're basically responsible for giving away money and running the libraries. Now, the result of that is that in, in the fall of 1988, when the company realized that it was going to have these staggering losses and they were foreseen, the company took steps to try to, to try to save itself. In other words, they're trying to save the employees that are left. But in order to do that, they've got to reduce some of the people who are there. They told Mr. Curry he had to cut his force. He had to cut the number of employees that worked for him. And over the past District court uh, trial underway in Philadelphia, one of the six nationwide district courts to allow television cameras in during a special three-year experimental period. Two different jurisdictions are allowing cameras into the appeals court and we have two guests here in the studio who are helping us better understand what we're seeing. Seth Waxman, as you watch this, and I know this is not very satisfactory,